I am here at 13th Colonies in America's Georgia to do a barrel pick. Now, 13th Colonies got super famous, super hot last year with their double oak. It would just sat on shelves for a while and then once everybody figured out how awesome it was, it went through the freaking roof. They're only like an hour and 45 minutes from the house, so we figured we'd come over. We've got a patron group here. We're gonna take the tour and then once we're done with the tour, we're gonna do a barrel pick. And then they've got a wall here of their experimental whiskeys. We're not supposed to buy one of those. We're gonna see if we could talk them out of one. They're hiding the double oaks right over there. I'm begging them for they're not gonna give them to me, but they sent me a sample of the double oak. I tried it, Kyle tried it at the house, didn't like it. It was too oaky, wasn't good. So I went to Bourbon Junkies Pours in the Park two weeks ago and somebody had a full bottle. Popped it open, one of the best things I've had. So I have no idea what was wrong with that sample, but it wasn't a good sample. But like the whole bottle was freaking fantastic. Okay, that's good to yeah. know. No, that's what I was like, why? what am I missing? Everybody's loving this. <laughs> so I had Kyle try it. I was like, Kyle tried it. Kyle was like, yeah, it's just something. I don't know if like something was in the bottle. When you sent me the note back that said that, he was like, I'm not really interested in it. I didn't like it. That's the only note. At all, we've received ever. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. That's what she thought. She's like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. But I did try, somebody had a full bottle and I tried to steal that one and it didn't work out. When's batch two coming out? That should be hitting shelves late September. Early, early October. Keep an eye out for it. Is it going to be as good or better than the first batch? I think better. We've done four by four. Everyone picks it as the one they like most. So we just think it's a better taste of bourbon this year. He said they had some. People been trying it. That's what I, that's what I heard out of that. <laughs> you, you might get to try a little today. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Come on out into the still room and kind of give you a little free description of us. Sit in here by the line and dandy, but we'll get a lot of that later. Our still room, as we call it, that's just the name that's always been. There's our 250 gallon still. That's been the still since day one. That's the one thing that has not ever changed in here. As we've researched and you know gotten better at what we do, we just realized that the water was one of the main keys to everything that we do here. You name it, there's a way to filter it, we do it. So there's literally nothing in that to take away from your flavor. Everybody understands basically how it still works. This side of the room over here is where our vodka processing works. The other thing is this room actually used to be right over here in this corner. We're getting ready for to do a handle vodka for tomorrow. First machine you see right there is nothing but an air rinse or it's our whiskey filling machine. It'll fill eight bottles in less than 10 seconds. Fortunate person after that has to put on a port 10 by hand. The next machine there, this is just for vodka and gin. And then again, the same person behind it, got to put the caps on it. Tighten right over now. Get a little NASCAR going in here. The labeling machine, the heat treatment machine behind that. Really, the unfortunate sort of series is on the end of the line. You can see on the wall there, I've got about 480, almost 500 cases in a day. They wind up picking up about 35,000 pounds. They're around about 900 barrels, so being stored away right now. Here we've got our specialty products, the double oak, our normal bourbon, rye, and some other specialty products. Here's your double oak for this year. So I got a truck outside. Do I pull it in here? This is the new release. This is, the new is this release. all of it? This is everything that will hit the market. Okay. Go back through there and then get to talk about my tractor sitting out here. My family has, uh, my father especially, loves collecting tractors. Most of these were working tractors on farms. We'll do parades with them and stuff like that. Keep them running good, you know, so every, every other Friday you'll see us all riding around in the parking lot, you know, keeping the battery charged and make sure they all run. So the South Georgia climate being such a big deal and how we see the aging of our, our barrels. It is incredible here. though that if you go up to where these, just even where these top barrels are, if you would get up on a ladder, you'd feel a 10 There's degree. There's a 10, 12 degree difference. Temperature where swing. We're standing 10 feet above us. We're right in that middle spot that it's, it gets really, really hot and makes the barrel expand and move and everything else and all in here. The humidity really keeps that wood solid and it keeps it going in and out. As you can see on the floor, what can happen when you get too much going on and you get a lot of leaking going on. But that's part of that angle. Yeah, this is kind of a fun wall. We put a lot of our older single barrels up here. Most of what we have up here is probably rye. These are probably anywhere between 7 to about 11 years, 12 years right now. But it was actually over 13 years. Dry. That one yeah. 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 We do bourbon over there, uh, high malt, and then there's a little sweet potato. That's, I don't know. They haven't got into it in about a year. So it's a lot of experimenting. <laughs> Experiments um, are fun. The story of the double oak is actually a really funny story. We were walking around a couple of years ago in the facility, me and the master distiller, Graham. We got to kind of a group of barrels, and I was like, what is this? And he's like, uh, something I did a long time ago, I don't even remember. And all of a sudden, we pulled out the information on him, and he's like, oh yeah, I double oak these, and like, I think they're probably pretty good, we should try some. As soon as we tried it, I was like, I can't believe we're not selling these. <laughs> like, I was like, this is... 
the best whiskey I've like ever had. Like, why is this not in a bottle? How many more of those around here do you think there are that you haven't found out about yet? There's, there's not ready? definitely some. I know for a fact there's some sneaky barrels. I'm going to leave it up to you guys how you want to do this. We can either taste some barrels first, or we can just try some kind of regular stuff just to get everybody introduced if anyone hasn't tried. Uh, we can go in anywhere you want to do this. Yeah, let's start, let's start with a control, right? Let's okay. start with the regular stuff so everybody gets an idea of what that's like, right? I mean, it's always always good for them to understand what the normal stuff is, and then we want the most interesting thing off of that. Flagship bourbon, 95 proof. What a lot of people don't know, it's like the little brother, the double up. Same mash bill, right? 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. Um, so we, we think this is a fantastic just daily sipper. Just because they pour it doesn't mean you have to drink it. It's not rude if you don't. Just because I drink it does not mean you have to drink it. Um, pace yourself, I hope you ate before you came. This is a democracy, so my vote counts no more than anybody else's. In 13th Colony, we are the oldest operating distillery in the state. We were not the first since Prohibition. There were others that came before that no longer exist today. 15 years is what we'll be celebrating next year, and I might get you guys to try some of our 15th anniversary bourbon. The three that we've got pulled out for you today, basically the three years in a row that we've got going on, 2017 burger that we're going to put in our bottle, the 2018 and then the 2019. Those are just our cast drink version of what we've got in the bottle right there. 100% of our single barrels go by the cast drink. We think that's kind of what makes them special, right? That you get straight out of the barrel. We don't want them if they're not cast drink. You know, if we're going to do something unique, like you're going for a unique expression, yeah. Yeah. why not have what that expression was, right, and, and not water it down? These three years all have a Something a little special about them. You're going to be right around that period. It's got a nice oakiness. You could definitely feel the kind of the essence of your normal release. I feel like this one has just a little more fruit forwardness, though. This one's probably the most fruity This one's A, by the way. So when you're done, I just need a one, two, or a three on A, B, and C. We'll do less than 10 this year. And uh, barrels. Yeah. So like what you guys are getting is pretty unique. 2019. Anybody, if anybody has any thoughts, we'd love to I like it. I like it. I, I mean, I like it better than your normal release, but of course, same, same. I like proof. So yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, instantly yeah. gives it some advantage. Yeah. I'm a fruit forward bourbon kind of person. So the fruit forwardness definitely yeah. speaks to me. I would agree. This 2019 is a very fruit. We get a lot of these kind of black fruits. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So keep them in order. I'm getting confused. You can do the Jill method. I just got a napkin and put eggs. <laughs> How organized, look at this. Jeez. Why you gotta brag like that? <laughs> well, try them with us and pick again. Last time I picked the Master Distiller stick. I know which one you like the best. So, what are you thinking? You, you like A or B better so far? I mean, now that it's A again, but I think B so far. Okay. Everybody's taste buds are different. That's why it's a democracy, though. It's why I don't I don't just pick the barrel I want. Whatever the group decides, that's what we go. Because honestly, like other patrons are going to get access to this. I don't want it to be just to my taste. Because sometimes my tastes are a little weird. Sometimes people send me double oaks I don't like. Like it happens. The classics of the bourbon in A were a lot more similar, I think, in B as to darker fruit, more sugar. I would say, yeah, darker fruit, yeah, a little sweeter to me. Both delicious, though. C's either about to throw us off or solidify this decision. Yeah, I'm really curious now what the third one will do. What did you think about C? I like them all. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I agree. I thought C had a, just a little more harshness to it. Anybody disagree? Anybody like C the best? No. You know that's the one they picked, right? You don't know that. <laughs> Does anyone need a little refresher if they want to do a comparison? Or... Hit me with a little B, A, and B. I agree with you. This one we tried it, and I like these flavors in the nose. It the back that finish on it. Just the finish is bad. Yeah. Why don't you try that from the first? I know. I that's too much. I <laughs> if, if I had a vote, I'd have to You do. You get a vote. Get a piece of paper. A, B, C. No, 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 we'll no, put vote. it in. No, we'll put it in. Come on. Patreons only. <laughs> but one thing I just noticed there, too, when we were driving out there like yesterday, so we're out there in the warehouse, too. It's 100 degrees. Right. right. We're pulling straight out there. We're getting hotter than it. Yeah. Like, like, start tasting better after about six. It, it's funny how that, like, 
every barrel pick I've been on where we bought four barrels is one of those they just walk in the rick house and like point at a barrel and then you end up trying 12 and you end up buying four because they're all good by the end. Greg uses a simple system where he'll put a star if he really loves a barrel. Notice when he's tasting 20 barrels by about number 12. They all start getting stars. <laughs> Anything's so, uh, a star at that point. Uh, yeah, my mom changed too. I actually really? changed to where I was. Actually... It's close between A and B for me, but I think I've locked my order in. Have you locked yours in, Jill? No? You locked yours in? You, you locked it? Yeah, I guess. Always... Everybody's locked in? With all the three that you've had, was any one of those like one of them? No, 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 no. None of those. I yeah. I mean, I, I thought A and B were dramatically better than C to me. And I've had ones that taste like C that I just don't typically like, but, you know, but someone out there would like that. I would like C all day. That little bit of harshness. That, it could be the proof that brings a little more in. I feel like C is drinking it. You ready? I'm ready. Give me A. My notes for A? No, nah, I don't need your notes. I need one, two, or three. Was it your favorite, your middle, or least favorite? One being your favorite. It was my middle. So it's two. So B, C, uh, you say it, I know. I, I can do math, but I just want to hear you say it. Okay, J-Rock? Uh, A is two. B? One. C? Three. Same. Jill? Same. Uh, A is one. Yeah. B is three. B is thr three? Ooh. What the? Ooh, mix okay. it up. C is two. So we scratch out the anomaly. <laughs> My, my results are also different. I thought, I, I went back and forth between A and B, and I thought A. Like, I really liked what A had going on, but it was really close between A and B for me. And then, yes, yeah, C was third to everybody but Jill. I like that. Um, so it looks like, like B's the winner. I had the same thing y'all had, and then when they gave me those second samples and I went back to them after I'd had some whiskey, I swapped. Like you see, I marked, I marked mine out and went back and, and changed it. What, what were you thinking? What was your favorite? So, we were talking about the temperature outside yeah. and trying them out there. Actually, your C was my favorite. Okay. That one actually had the star on the barrel for us. Um, but after seeing the reactions on the taste of it, let me try it here. When the temperature's cooled down, this is cooled down. And I changed my mind when straight back to Hey, I went one, two, three, eight. For the folks that make whiskey for a living, I was right, and all of y'all were wrong. <laughs> Every one of y'all was. Should we listen to these people, or should we just buy them? We have to. Okay. Put A's okay. Number one. B is number two. Is that what you got for me? It's A, B, C, one, two, three. No, that's not. That's not what you told me at all. <laughs> that is not what you told me at all. <laughs> what in the. What can I. <laughs> okay. Let's start over. So for A, the first one you tried, it's two. Okay. And then one, and then three. Yes, sir. Okay, Jason. A is two. B is one. C is three. So I screwed it. And you got one? <laughs> Your favorite is. I, I like the one, two, three. A, B, C, one, two, three. So you're the same as me. Okay, so one, two, three. Jill had one. This uh, might be a little closer. Jill went one, three, two. I had one, three, two. And then I had, and then you had two, one, three. And then I had one, two, three. So like literally Jill's three may be the thing that cost this. Oh, that flipped it. A wins. A wins. A wins. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill, for costing B. But it would have been a tie otherwise. It would have been a tie, and then we would have had to go to sudden death overtime and flip a coin or something. We don't want to do that. That's never happened. So you, you made this easier on us, as you always do. This is completely on you. You know that, right? The barrel we pick is now your responsibility. I'm cool with that. I'll put okay. my name on it. Next year is our 15-year anniversary. Um, so we have a one-time release that's going to come out in the spring. We'd like to try it. Be right at nine years old. Right at nine years old. It is a bourbon. We did French oak finish on it. Somewhere between 133 and 136 should be about the proof point on it. I am probably the world's most notorious French oak hater. Uh, uh, there is only one French oak finish whiskey I've ever had that I liked. And that is Buffalo Trace's Charter Oak, which is unobtainium, right? Interesting. I like this. That's the second French oak finish I like. Like, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's really good. good. We don't know what it is about French oak when you do it here. It does something to really mellow down the, the proof. Now, did y'all use French oak barrel staves? Like, how did you finish we, this? We did French oak staves. We just felt like that was the right move because we didn't want it to be overpowered. It's yeah, very it's cheap when it comes to buying French oak barrel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> French oak barrels are expensive. So, this bottle will be March-ish of next yeah. year. Roughly how many? Probably be... Trying to figure out my chances. <laughs> We're probably talking maybe 500 something cases. That's roughly what you're thinking the blend's going to taste like, though? Okay. 
Because, I mean, that's nice and subtle. You like that one? That's, you like that better than our barrel pig? Jeez. Yeah. We just heard it's not the best thing yeah. they've ever put out, which they should say to everybody that comes in here. Just Yours is going to be the best uh, thing we ever put out. It's a lie. It's, now we know. There's at least three things they put out better than our barrel. It's still a really good barrel. I was hoping to get a try y'all in the double oak, but I've just been informed that we have no additional double oak. Is that correct? I, I got enough right here. We've got a case. <laughs> we'll buy a case. We love hearing the feedback. I love hearing the negative feedback. I'm like, well, what did you like? Like, uh, what can we improve on? Here's how you can improve on the barrel pick process. We can go pop some barrels from the experimental Ooh, wall. Or you leave, maybe I'll get him to pop one more barrel. Okay. We'll do it. One experimental barrel is what it, he said one. He limited it to one. We'll see how drunk we can get him. <laughs> sweet potato, you want a sweet potato? So, That's the one you want out of all the ones that you haven't even heard all the ones he got. Is that the is that the most interesting thing you've got out there? Because he told me he told me we could only open he said we could only open three barrels. So <laughs> Graham, when was the last time you tasted the sweet potato? Oh, sure. I know it's been a years Let's try it. It's, it's I have no idea what we're about to get. What do you think? It might be good. It might be good. This is a true story, right? You went home, you roasted sweet potatoes. I brought them out there, peeled them, put them in a bucket, mush them up, and shoved them in the match. And the whole building smelled like that for a week while it was burning up, too. My alcohol percentage on that one, I think, jumped up to like 16 or 17. What does it smell like? Give me your give me your sniffing notes. It smells like roasted sweet potatoes. The proof hits you a little hard on that. I think it's probably pretty strong. All right, so what do I need to do to get that barrel too? We don't even know how to sell this barrel. Like it's you don't need to sell it. You just need to give it to me. I'm not even sure. Or sell it to me. What do you think? Oh, it's got a lot of proof. It's actually like weirdly good. It's not weirdly good, it's just goodly good. Like, I'm gonna be straight with you, you're just gonna have to tell me no on that barrel. I'm gonna make you tell me no. I'm gonna have to say no. We gotta figure out how to legally do this. That's good. I like that. And he told me no. I like that better than that. So we can't bring, like can't bring this to anybody. Like, none of y'all are ever gonna get to taste this. I'm sorry. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's sweet potatoes. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. It's just anything different than the regular match. Like it's so, it's so hot though. I might say, okay, maybe that's an American whiskey. It's very bourbon esque. Like it's better than an American whiskey to me or a light whiskey, but yeah. it definitely's got the proof. It tastes like a whiskey. It's just a. Yeah. It's good. It's sweet potatoes. It's really sweet. I love that. Sweet potatoes got a lot of sugar in it, so you got a lot of alcohol out of it. You feel the proof. Like it's, I, I would like to know what the proof is. He's got a little finger. 134? He won't sell me the barrel. What do you think about that? Barrel? <laughs> Whiskey barrel? I've got to figure out how to even label that one. I thought distilleries. I thought their jobs were to sell whiskey. That's what I thought. We I can't didn't even know. buy it. I didn't even know. I can't even buy it. We're, we're the hard people to get whiskey. Apparently. We left here with no double oaks yeah. and no sweet potato whiskey. Do we really not have any double oaks this year available? Yeah, that's right. It seemed like a yes, but not for these people. Yes or no? I mean, you can always say yes, but no. This right here, you'll get to try the double Thank you. Hey. But now, here's where I keep this. If you try the double open this year, and I want honest opinion. Just don't bring Danielle in here because if I say I don't like it, she gets really mad at me. Okay. Please give it like a minute, though. Let it, let it, let it, let it, let it open. Let it open. Okay. You're looking at about, what are we at, 130? 136 points. This matters to me a lot. Feedback analysis. And not that it needs to be good, honest feedback. So I get a ton of like sweet oak up front on it, and then it dissipates into just a dry oakiness that just coats your palate. So you have to like oak. Yeah. If you don't want oak, this is not gonna be what you're looking for. Now, typically I like sweet oak and not dry oak. So I'm, I'm a little torn in that this gives you both. Like honestly, there are not a lot of whiskeys that give me both. I felt like the bottle I had the first release didn't have as much dry oak on it. It was a little more sweet oak than dry oak. This one pushes a little more dry oak on it, but it's still a really interesting, like balanced whiskey. Like you get that sweetness up front. That's why I love a Woodford Double Oak just because I get vanilla sweetness. This one gives me a little more oaky sweetness and then dissipates into that dry oak. Really complex, really interesting for, for a double oak whiskey. I get a little grape like eel rare. It's kind of weird. I see where you can get that. I, I, I just took that as like the, I call it sweet oak on the front, but it definitely has a little bit of kind of fruity grapiness with that sweet oak. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. And then the dry, the dry oak just stays with you forever. I'll be living with that for days. <laughs> so how do you feel? 
I love it. Has everybody had the first one? No, it's so hard to get. Nobody's ever had the, nobody in the world had the first one. They only made seven bottles of it. And he's got, he's got two of them. This has been interesting. It just, it's so dark, so viscous, so, so much to it. So, well, we love it. Well, I appreciate you having us. Yeah, it's yeah. so fun. If he figures out how he wants to sell that sweet potato barrel, let me know. We ended up buying the one barrel of barrel strength bourbon. Uh, fantastic bottle. Had a great time here at 13th Colonies. That should be available right now, so be sure to check that out. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us, and we'll catch y'all in the next one.